statement, a very profound statement about a very successful theory. Now, the real killer in this trial was an analysis of this textbook, Pandas in People. Um, and this was done by another of the witnesses, a wonderful uh, philosophy professor from Southeastern Louisiana University named Barbara Forrest. Um, early on, before the trial started, we wrote to the publishers of Pandas and People. Um, and when you read Pandas and People, let me show you what it actually looks like. This is from the textbook. This is the definition of intelligent design. And it, 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 when you read this book, it doesn't sound religious. There's nothing in there about Genesis, the Bible, God, Jesus. It's not there. Intelligent design means various forms of life begin abruptly through an intelligent agency with distinctive features already intact. Fish with fins and scales, birds with feathers, beaks and wings, and so forth. Sounds very scientific. When we subpoenaed the publisher, we asked the publisher, has this book ever been published before? Was it published under a different name? Do you have editorial correspondence, page proofs, drafts, stuff like that? I didn't think this was useful, but the lawyers did it anyway. They got two boxes of material. Barbara went through it, and she called me up one day and said, Ken, you're never going to guess what's in these boxes. And she told me, and I could barely contain, I, I, all I could think of was, didn't these guys learn anything from the Nixon administration? <laughs> you got you to gotta burn this stuff. You can't leave it around. So, so, so let, me show, let me tell you what they didn't burn. It turns out this book had been published earlier under a different name, which is why we didn't know about it. It was published under the name Biology and Origins. This earlier version mapped paragraph for paragraph with pandas. It was the same book with a certain subtle difference. Say, watch this. Creation means the various forms of life began abruptly through an intelligent creator. With their, it, it's the same paragraph. All these guys did was to fire up Microsoft Word and do a global find and replace and replace the word creator with the word designer and then say, see, it's got nothing to do with creation. Now, Barbara analyzed this in great detail. Here are the earlier versions of Pandas and People. In blue, the number of times design or intelligent design is mentioned. You can see it's almost mentioned, not at all. And the number of times creation or creationism is mentioned, about 100 times in the book. Watch this. Bang. <laughs> all of a sudden, in the middle of 1987, creation drops to zero and intelligent de and design zooms up to take its place. And what this tells you very clearly is something remarkable happened in 1987. Now, you guys look, I know where I am. This is a great university. You guys look like a bright group. Audience participation. What happened in 1987? Not Kansas. There, there it is, the educator in the front row. Edwards versus Aguilard, a Supreme Court case. So here, here's, 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 here's the deal. This is a timeline of litigation about the theory of evolution. Scopes trials all the way over here. Uh, Selman versus Cobb County, the Georgia trials up there. 1987 was the only Supreme Court case on this issue. It identified creation science as a religious doctrine. These guys had this book about creation science. Suddenly the Supreme Court says this is religious. They huddle together and they say, we got to call it something else. Got any ideas? How about intelligent design? Fire up the word processor. Let's change the name of the creator to designer. And now we can pretend it's not religious. Anybody who tells you that intelligent design is different from old-fashioned creationism, remind them of how this intelligent design textbook came to be, which is a book on creationism was simply changed to a design book by changing the name of the creator to that of a designer. By the time the judge saw this, um, he had his mind made up. And his ruling came out about a month after the trial ended. It was a stinging rebuke to the teaching of intelligent design. Um, I urge everyone who's interested in this to download this decision. All you got to do is type Kitz Miller, K-I-T-Z Miller, into Google. The decision is the first thing that comes up. It's 137 pages long. But it's double-spaced, so it's easy to read. I have a, a good friend who I went to grad school with while he was going to law school. He's not involved in this sort of stuff, but he knew I was in this trial. He read this decision. He called me up, and he said, Ken, this is the funniest legal decision I have ever read. Did all this stuff actually happen in the courtroom? And the answer is yes. And he said, you know, somebody should make a movie out of this. Well, it turns out two movies. Paramount Pictures has a screenplay under development 
for an Inherit the Wind type movie set in contemporary America based on this trial, and public television, Nova, beat them to it. Um, no, the, the, the Dover trial, you might say, was judgment day for the intelligent design movement. So what public broadcasting did in the NOVA program was to put it on film. A, a movie that aired in November this year, I hope some of you saw it, it was an extraordinary piece of video. Um, it had the judge, it had the school kids in Dover, it had hot shot attorneys, it had loudmouth biologists, <laughs> it had the church, it had the state, it had burning evolution murals. The name of it was Judgment Day. It aired on November 13th, and it's now available online. And I'm very proud and happy to say that yesterday it won a Peabody Award for Outstanding Journalism. So if you haven't seen it yet, go to the NOVA website. You can actually watch this on streaming video. If you're a teacher, buy the DVD. It's great entertainment, and indeed it was great fun. Now, um, what does all this mean for your state? What does this mean for Texas? And, and I think this is important and this is relevant. Um, <laughs> Texas, Texas is an extraordinary state in every respect. And what I mean by that, and educators in this room know this, Texas is the most influential state, bar none, in the United States for science textbook publishers. In a typical science adoption year, sales just in your state are about 40% of the national total. That means publishers pay attention to what Texas wants in its books, and that's absolutely correct. The other thing is your process of adoption is open and public. I don't know of a single state in the United States that develops its curriculum as publicly and as openly as Texas does, where everyone can see, you might not like what's happening, but you can always see what's happening. And no state approves and adopts textbooks as openly as Texas, with day after day of contentious public hearing, argument back and forth, and so forth. In most states, it's done quietly in the back room. You guys do it right up front. And what that means, among other things, is it means that, first of all, the process is politically contentious. But secondly, it also means that you have a chance to input into the decisions. I'll give you an example. The biology textbook hearings in 2003 were attended, of course, by many people who wanted to water down the coverage of evolution, put intelligent design or creationism into textbooks. But it was also attended by a lot of other people as well. Here, for example, is one of the newspaper articles that came up about this, a new chapter in the evolution fight. Um, there was some discussion as to whether or not there was um, a good hearing going on at the State Board of Education. Um, I've always been enamored of those wonderful T-shirts that you can buy in airports, don't mess with Texas. Um, many of you may know, however, that a lot of teachers in your state showed up at Austin in these hearings wearing T-shirts that kind of looked like this, but actually looked a little different. And they said, don't mess with textbooks. And that most, don't mess with textbooks message carried the day. And the reason for my saying that is the State Board of Education ultimately approved all of the biology textbooks, didn't require the watering down of evolution, and all of your school districts had a choice between some very, very good books. If you want to read about this, there's an extraordinary organization in your state called Texas Citizens for Science. Their website is simply texscience.org. I would urge you, if you're interested in this, to go to the website, get involved in this organization. It's for scientists, it's for educators, it's for ordinary citizens, it's even for students. Now, they're not the only people who are concerned about this. There also is an organization called the Texas Freedom Network. They are sponsoring a Stand Up for Science petition. Their website is simply TFN, TexasFreedomNetwork.org. There are lots of interested citizens in the state who want to make sure that as hearings go forward on these textbook issues and on curricular issues, science has its place at the table. And this is an important thing. Um, here, for example, is part of the Stand Up for Science uh, petition at the Texas Freedom Network website. And both of these, if you're interested in citizen uh, activism, are worth thinking about.